Hey y'all, I'm Jason, or Reeds, and today I'm going to be going over my entry into Mini Jam 61, uh, Ancient Egypt. Mini Jam is a 72 hour long jam that always comes with some sort of limitation. In this case, the game had to be themed around two conflicting ideas. My take on that was to do a Risk of Rain inspired roguelite looter shooter, where all the loot had some sort of major downside. Um, this is very similar, as you might notice, to the lunar items in Risk of Rain 2. I was having a lot of fun with that game at the time, as you might be able to tell. The tools I used for this jam were Unity for my engine, Blender for my models, Photoshop for textures on normal maps, and Reaper as my DAW for music and sound effect editing. Side note, if there's an instrument you're interested in that you hear in the soundtrack that you're curious about, I'll link you the VST in the comments. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so here it is. The uh, first level looks like got a night night version of the stage. Um, the skybox and the lighting for each level is randomized every time the player spawns in. Um, it chooses from a set of three or four, I don't quite remember, presets that I set up in the editor that just change the ambient lighting color um, for everything and the actual skybox cube map. Whatever format it's in now. Um, that's that. That was kind of the whole deal with this uh, jam. There was a lot of randomness, and I really wanted to make it deterministic random, where you know you can put in a seed and you'll get the same result every time. But it really just ended up being choosing at runtime because that that was the faster solution, and I don't think it really made a huge difference in terms of actual gameplay. Um, but yeah, the environment's randomized a little bit. The loot is randomized every time you get it. Uh, there are six different possible uh, pieces of loot that you can get. And when you open the box, it just picks an index from zero to five and spawns that uh, with a little bit of random velocity in that orb. As soon as it uh, settles, well, the physics body sleeps, it spawns the actual item. All right. I had to dub over this because my computer takes off to the moon every time I turn on any game, so let me go over the items that I'm getting right now in this footage. So I already have two of those sandals, which gives you an extra jump at the cost of your maximum health, which can really add up. Um, I had one playthrough where I had six or so and I was at 50 something health, it was crazy. Uh, but you do get a lot of extra mobility, which is pretty helpful. Um, the Strange Elixir is nice to have, especially if you don't have a Staff of Sapping yet. Um, it, it boosts your heal over time with the uh, downside of it delaying when that heal over time starts after you receive an instance of damage. Which does include the damage given from the Glass Bow, which um, every time you shoot a bullet, you have around a... Oh, this was sad. I had to go all the way down. You have around a 30% chance of taking one damage. Um, per stack of glass bow, uh, and that's that's really how stacking works for the most part, uh, with the notable exception being the sandal and cracked lens, I believe. Uh, but the armor, for instance, reduces incoming damage. Every instance of damage, it does that reduction however many times you have that armor in the stack. And the staff sapping it gives you uh, health based off of the little money that you get. And for each shard, it gives you one health back per staff of sapping you have. Um, so I, I did give the player the ability to crouch, and actually a lot of a lot of little cool mobility options that didn't really work out super well for web. You can sprint, you can slide, you can slide hop, you can air strafe. The uh, problem is a lot of those key combinations seem to correspond with the Chrome bookmark creating uh, hotkey combinations. Which is rather unfortunate because you'll just be sliding happily down the hill, and then Chrome will ask you if you want to bookmark the page, which immediately breaks everything. Uh, unfortunate, but that's the cost of putting it on WebGL. Um. <laughs> yeah. The chests, as you can see, are like, scattered throughout the level. The there's a little bit of randomness involved there, where. Um, they're all there when the level first starts, but then this, the script goes through each chest and 
gives it a 50-50 of whether it actually stays in the level, which is very hacky and uh, leaves the possibility that no chests will spawn, even though that's very, very unlikely. Um, I was I was a little bit pained by that, but did not have time to fix it. Uh, this run, I think I only got one uh, Cracked Lens because, man, they're a bad item. I did not have time to balance uh, the game. <laughs> The, the best combination you can get is lots of glass bows, lots of staffs of sapping, uh, and anything else besides more cracked lenses, because the cracked lenses eventually decrease your uh, damage per shot, or not damage per shot, your fire rate so much that you're shooting like one time, one maybe two times per second, and it's just, it's just not enough damage to keep up with the hordes. The enemy scaling works kind of boringly. I didn't have time to make more interesting enemies, or even variations on different enemies. Oh, you can see there I didn't take nearly as much damage as I should have because of my three stacks of armor. But um, it's the enemies, all they do is get more health per level and give you more money, and they spawn more often. They don't they don't move faster. Uh, they, actually, I think they do hit harder. I think I, I remember putting that in. Um, but they don't... I really wanted to do a projectile on me, just didn't have time. You see right there? I, I didn't take that lens because they're just kind of bad. Uh, they're just not worth getting after maybe one. Uh, yeah. But really, just... I wish I had more time for better enemies. It just gets kind of boring. And you'll see I end this run by kind of committing suicide into a group of husks. <laughs> because... It doesn't scale super well. Uh, you do get a ton of money per kill in later levels, though. You were starting out with probably uh, five or something per kill, and now you're getting um, twenty. Um, yeah, I had the, I had a lot of a lot of a strange elixir. The shame is it's not not extremely useful, especially if you're not a fan of just kiting enemies or running away, because it will start healing you very fast as soon as you take damage. Um, and I don't mean, like, soon afterwards, but as soon as that heal over time triggers, you'll start healing very fast. But with, um, six of them, it takes six extra seconds for the player to start getting that healing. And six seconds is kind of a long time. Another balance issue that I, I wish I could have fixed. Um, but, you know, game jams. You don't have, don't have a lot of time. I did have a lot of fun hiding all the little chests around the level and putting these spawn locations in some weird places. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, but there's there's an objective at the top right that tells you what you actually have to do. I'm not just making this stuff up as I go. Um, you're supposed to collect enough of these relics, which shows in the top left before you can trigger the totally not risk of rain 2 teleporter, which is called the sundial in this. I even tried to replicate the shader, but um, I only have four so far. Let's see, the fifth is another elixir radio. That's a lot of elixirs. That's, that's actually the most I've ever seen, even in longer runs. There is one chest that I think I already picked up and it worked, that just occasionally would not work. My theory is that it was accidentally spawning the uh, item below the level and the level was dropping through. This entire level is not Unity terrain. This is a model that I sculpted in Blender. Um, I don't really know how to do terrain modeling, and if there's a better way to do it, I probably should have done that. But I just sculpted a terrain model and kind of slapped a mesh glider on it. That's why it's kind of, you know inconsistent in how dense the triangles are. But, uh... Yeah. That's the whole point of these shams, though, is to learn how to... learn how to do some... something better, something's faster. Learn how not to do some things. I try to make it a goal to take away something from each jam, even if it's, don't do this which I will definitely go over in the wrap-up of this video. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw myself into the void. I, I hate that sound effect. I regret putting that in. 
But I, I like the stat screen. It shows you how many of each things you got, how long you survived. You know, it's pretty cool. Alright, so some takeaways from this gem. I think the art turned out pretty cool. That was that was definitely pretty nice. Um, the cell shader definitely did a lot of that heavy lifting and making it look uh, like my art wasn't crap. I am not a 3D artist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the main loop was actually pretty fun, even if it didn't scale super well. Uh, super ridiculous stacks of items could get pretty interesting with like 10 jumps and potentially one-shotting everything with the risk of killing yourself every shot. Um, that, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I like how the music turned out, even if it was a little bit short. I tried to do two tracks per jam entry, and this one really only ended up with one. The main menu just uses this like desert ambience from Freesound, which Freesound is great. I love Freesound. Um, but I usually do more orchestral tracks, so this synth one was a bit of a, an experiment. I think it turned out uh, better than I expected, so that that's definitely counted as a win. Um, for stuff that went could have gone better, the enemy variety was yeah pretty boring. Scaling wasn't super interesting. I had more planned. Um, I think two more. One was a projectile. One was just going to be some AOE something. But man, did I not have time to do that? I submitted this game uh, oh, like ten minutes or something before it was um, the jam was over. But that's that's almost always the case. Um, it did have a bit of polish that was lacking. Um, that void on the outside, you can jump into it and it will not kill you. You'll just fall forever. And there is also no quit button, so you will just need to alt F4. <laughs> Which, not ideal. But, um... Uh, and the UI was kind of ugly. You saw it was really just this TMP uh, Chimera. <laughs> uh, it's just, it was a little bit rushed, but it conveyed what I wanted it to. Um... As for the the uh, actual jam ranking, uh, it took f fourth place with um, an enjoyment score of like 4.08 something. That's pretty pretty good in my opinion. I'm happy. That's that's the one I'm uh, I care about the most. I want people to enjoy it. Um, that jam ha also had a lot of really solid entries. I had a had a great time playing through all of them. Um, I learned a lot about how not to set up inventory systems. That, uh, oh man, the way the items were tracked in that was super cursed. Um, they weren't just data, they were actually prefabs that I would disable and put at zero out on the player. So that, so that the player would know what items it had. It was just the worst. Um, but now I know not to do that. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe or like the video if something you enjoyed. I will link to the game and the jam entries in the description. Uh, peace.